Hello, my friend. I am so excited to share this with you today. This project, this project right here is not for someone looking for subtle. This is intense. I want you just to take a little peek and see if you can take in, can you even handle all of that gold and all of that rich decadent color? It is so amazing and I had so much fun doing it. It's a, a pretty heavy, um, process. It's one step on top of another step on top of another step. There's about seven uh, steps to this finish and I haven't even shown you the sides of it yet. So uh, if you will just stick with me, you will learn a lot of techniques in one video um, from start to finish and the sides are beautiful. If you like like the botanical jungle uh, boho little bit of leopard, a lot of leopard, then stick with me. I cannot wait to share this with you. I hope you enjoy it. I found this dainty waterfall art deco chest of drawers at a local garage sale and it has a very masculine look, but I felt like it had a lot of room to be very artistic and um, creative. But then when I got it home, I realized it's a drop down <laughs> writer's desk. So that in itself, I did not address in this video. We did not do the inside. I feel like that's another day, another project, but I am going to show you how I change the outside of this piece drastically. So I started with the drawer fronts. And to do this, I removed the handles, which I wasn't sure were removable, but they were. Um, I just unscrewed those because I'm going to do a stencil pattern on the front, which is totally possible to do with the hardware in place, but it's really, really helpful if you can remove the hardware. So I'm using Dixie Bell Mud because I'm actually going to create what's called a raised stencil effect. I want to lift this pattern up off the front of the dresser so that it actually has like texture and feel, something that you can touch, rub your fingers over, um, and really be highlighted. So this stencil that I'm using right now is the leopard section off of the Safari stencil. It's by Dixie Belle. It comes with four different animal patterns. I believe there's leopard, zebra, tiger, and giraffe. And um, I just cut the stencil. It actually is perforated and I'm just using the leopard by itself. So this is just a small palette knife that I'm using here and applying the Dixie Bell Mud. It is um, sort of like wall spackle, but it's much, uh, it's very smooth, easy to work with. Um, it's easy, it easily sands down if you're using it to fill holes or repair chipped areas, chipped veneer, things like that. You can just put this in place, let it dry, sand it to the shape that you want it. Um, we aren't going to be doing any sanding here. So you just scrape your mud in place, get it exactly the way you want it, and then just raise your stencil straight up. And I use my finger here to rub off any excess that has um, hung over the side. And then you just want to pick your stencil up again, and you're going to line it up exactly where you left off. So if you just keep moving your stencil from one side to the other, the little leopard dots actually match up. And I trimmed my stencil way down. You can see where I matched it up there. It's just a, a tiny little thread of plastic that's called mylar that's holding it in place. Um, it actually had about a quarter of an inch of mylar there and I trimmed it all the way down so that I could line my leopard spots up right next to each other or butt them up right next to each other. You can um, apply mud with your fingers. You can apply it with a palette knife, a spatula, it's up to you. And you can also make the thickness of your, um, the thickness of your ray stencil as thick as you want it. You can lay on a lot or you can lay on just a little bit. And then you'll see once I get it kind of smoothed in place, I start to scrape off some of my excess. I turn that palette knife sideways and I scrape off what's left and I put it over in the jar um, so that I can, you don't want to waste any of it. See there, you just scrape it back into the jar and you can use that on your next pass. 
So here you can see that I've done all three sections. You can see that it's a little bit rough. That is okay. You can see even where, where the lines meet. That's okay too. Remember, we're gonna paint over this and we want texture. We want to have extra texture there. My mud on my dresser drawers is dry and I am now gonna add um, clear coat flat over the top of my mud just with a chip brush. The reason I'm doing this is because if, it's, if it, you don't give it enough time to fully cure, it will actually reactivate a little bit if you're gonna be working it really hard. And I'm gonna be using the, the Terra clay paint on this with a lot of water and I'll be using um, a lot of brush strokes, a lot of blending on top of it. Um, without having enough time to let it dry overnight. So um, one quick tip on how to move forward on a project with mud is if you heat dry it, um, set it in place once it's dry with uh, one of the top coats, I do satin or flat, and then you can just move, once this is dry, you can move on with your project and you don't have to worry about it smearing or reactivating and you don't lose your texture. So you can see I'm just painting this on in a lot of different directions. The, the point is just to get it on there. It doesn't matter if there's brush strokes, what way you do it. It doesn't have to be neat. I'm just making it super quick and super easy because you just want it covered. And you can see here that I've got several drawers done and two of the drawers that aren't done yet. Once you're finished putting mud on, you only need about 20 minutes for it to dry and you can move forward with paint. So now we are laying color on. So if you can see here, I have started with a base coat of black. I painted the entire piece in black paint which was called onyx i let that dry overnight and now i'm moving on adding color so the black is what i call my under layer i want that black there so that when i start painting these other colors on top of it if i spray water or i wet choose to wet distress that black will actually come through and show itself instead of the wood i didn't want the wood to come through my paint colors um, i also like putting black under these colors because it really gives them a richness and a boldness they're very very thick clay paints anyway they're they're thick and they're highly pigmented um, but the black really richens them so um, maybe you want to give that a try so you can see me here i am adding several different colors the darker blue is malachite and then the green to the right on that bottom drawer is um uh, nope sorry let me tell you that again the blue to the left is galaxy and that brighter green that you see to the right is called malachite so i'm just adding in all the different colors that i want to use which is all types of blues and greens and then i'm spraying it with my water bottle and then I'm using my besting wax brush right here, which yeah, it's called a wax brush, but it's also the best blending brush there is. And I just go in and I blend out the lines between the colors like you see me do often. And then I'm just kind of laying out these different colors wherever I want them, adding a little more malachite there, um, bringing the galaxy blue up into the malachite. And then look, I added some more onyx. I put a little more black on top of it. So I'm still using the black to richen those colors even on top of the black itself. Again, picking up my blending brush and moving it in small, very light circular motions. When I'm doing that circular motion, I'm not rubbing hard. It's a very light, barely tapping the surface area. So this color right here, I love it. It's called Lonnie's Lagoon. I love Lonnie's Lagoon. It reminds me of like swimming pool water. Um, it's a beautiful color. It's very bright though. So you'll see me sort of bring up some darker colors into that as well to kind of tone it down. I am gonna be using a highlight color here in just a minute and I didn't want it to be Lonnie's Lagoon, but I do love that color very, very much. Working with these clay paints and doing it in a very abstract way is very freeing. You want to just sort of, we call this the no rules paint. You just don't want to have any rules. Just play with the color and keep adding it wherever you want. And then you do need to give it a little bit of time to set back and let it dry because this is what it looks like as it's drying. It starts to shift and change colors as the air hits it. So now I'm going to add my favorite color in the clay paint line, which is pistachio. And I'm actually sitting here snacking on pistachios right now as I make this voiceover um, in their lime green bag. I love this color. Um, I'm just adding it to 
a, uh, around each handle. I put a little pistachio paint on, I spritz it with a little bit of water, and then I'm using this brush. Um, it's just a brush that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's called a mop brush. It is a great brush for feathering out or uh, really blending out paint. It'll pick up a lot of paint and hold it, and then it'll let you sort of blend it out as well. So if you don't have a mop brush, you should get yourself one. And that's what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna do this exact same technique around every single handle. Now that last part, you can see I'm bringing some blue back in. I'm adding Galaxy around it because I actually used too much pistachio and it went out too far and too big more than I wanted. So no big deal. You just put a little bit more blue over it. I use that mop brush again and manipulate that paint around so it is just the way I like it. And here you can see all the blues and greens that I used. And there we go. How crazy fun is that? Now let's move on to the sides. So this here is Bougainvillea, which I thought was my favorite clay paint color. Um, but pistachio's got it beat for right now. But I love a good, bright, bold lipstick pink, and this is Bougainvillea. So maybe you say it differently than that, but that's how I say it. Um, so I'm adding Bougainvillea over the black on the sides, and I will be introducing another color here in just a minute to the middle of that. But for right now, just getting this covering on the side because this is an underlayer. All of this is an underlayer. Even the front is going to be covered a lot here in a minute. Um, it's all an underlayer. So this is marigold. I'm adding marigold to the middle here. And um, marigold is a really pretty, like a light dreamsicle orange color. Um, and bougainvillea will go all the way around that. So marigold will be sort of like a highlight in the middle. And I just, I know that I'm doing artwork on top of this. And so this will just sort of serve as a backdrop. Repping for the high school here. Go WC, Winston Churchill High School. WC. All right, so now I'm gonna spray my paint and then I'm gonna do this little mini dance thing here. You see me like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. That's called letting the water do its thing. So you wanna spray some water and you need to give it, like give it a minute to kind of soak into the paint and then you can start manipulating the paint with your brush. It's not gonna do it as soon as you spray it. Like spray it, let it sit for 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, see what happens, and then you can start working it. So I don't need this to be perfect. I don't need it to be a perfect blend. I just want to bring the colors together a little bit, rubbing um, my brush up and down, vertically, horizontally, just marrying the two colors as best I can. So I decided that I also wanted to add a little bit of Moonbeam you can see how thick the paint is there. This is Moonbeam, which is white. I use it to tone down these colors often in the clay base paints. Um, so I'm just gonna add some Moonbeam right to the middle here, and this really gives it sort of a dreamsicle color. And I'll just continue to work that in until I get it just the way I like it, and then we will start with our hand-painted artwork on the sides. Okay, I lied. We're not going to start with our hand-painted artwork on the sides because I need to let that get good and dry. So I'm going to move back to the front, which is what you can do when you start working on a project. You just work on it in phases. Let one part dry while you move to another part, then let that dry while you move to another part. Now we are, what on earth? What am I doing to my, to my leopard spots? I've taken my stencil. I've laid it back down in place over the raised stencil that is good and dry, and I am applying gold leaf adhesive yes we are going to be using gold leaf that excites me so much i love gold leaf so you just hold your stencil in place now you can just use a brush and apply it to the circles or to the little spots if you want without it but this makes it so much easier i'm using a craft brush gold leaf adhesive you guys is so so sticky so your fingers are going to be sticky what what is that? Holy cow. That is the end product. And I am going to show you how to do that. But look at the drawer with the gold leaf and look at the drawers without the gold leaf. I mean, I could go either way. I like them both, but I love the brilliance of gold leaf. There is no paint on earth that will give you the shimmer and shine of gold leaf. So let me show you how to do this. 
So once you have applied your adhesive to all of your leopard spots, you need to let that adhesive dry for about 30 minutes. You've got to let that adhesive dry. If you've used spray adhesive, that's a different story. You can you can put leaf on that immediately, um, but I wouldn't advise doing spray adhesive on a, like a dresser project like this because you do get overspray. So it's just easiest to set your stencil in place, apply your adhesive and let that dry. Once it's dry, you just get these gold leaf sheets, which I order in bulk from Amazon because they are much cheaper to order from Amazon than to buy. They're $10 a package at Hobby Lobby or Michael's and they are, it's only for like 25 sheets. You can get like a packet of like 300 sheets for 10 bucks on Amazon. So that's my little tip for you. You just apply these square by square um, until you get them covered. They are only going to stick where you have adhesive, adhesive in place. Um, so it does feel like there's a lot of waste, but you can see me pulling off some loose pieces there and applying them um, in other areas because you wanna use as much as you can and not waste it. Now I'm just using a soft craft brush Look at this, this is like magic, y'all. I love this part, this is my favorite part. I wish I could gold leaf projects all day long, every day. This is so satisfying to me. Does that make me weird? I don't know, I think it's super satisfying. Um, you just take that brush, and you just wanna hit it from every single angle. You can be rough, it doesn't matter. That adhesive is so sticky, it is going to grip onto your gold leaf. You don't have to be gentle, it's not fragile. And then all of the fragile gold leaf will fly away and you're going to have like gold leaf dust everywhere around you. So here I'm giving you an up close view. This is exactly what it looks like and you want to make sure that you hit this from every angle because you'll have little like scrubby edges on it and in order to soften those edges you just want to keep working it just keep hitting it with your brush i eventually put away this brush and found a brush that was even a little bit more coarse to kind of go in and do like my final sanding and knock it off completely um, so that it didn't have uh, loose tiny little pieces all over it Okay, this is gold leaf dust, and those of you that do gold leaf, you may have a heart attack, but I do vacuum up a lot of the remnants. Um, some people pick this up and put it in bags, and that's just not me. Okay, let's move on to the art on the, draw, uh, on the drawing part. You can see me looking down to the left. I'm actually looking at my telephone, another telephone. So I Googled, um, what did I Google? Jungle leaves. Um, banana leaves I googled images and then I just put them all together in my own way on the side so right now I'm drawing the back side of a leopard and a tail that's what I just finished drawing so I googled leopard wallpaper and found an image that I liked and I just copied what I saw on the leopard wallpaper and I just stuck him on there then I googled a banana leaf and I'm drawing that right here I'm using chalk on the side of my clay paint where I'd clay painted uh, with the Bougainvillea and the Marigold. So I've just got a piece of chalk. It's great because if you make a mistake or you don't like what you've done, just wipe it away with your finger or a damp cloth. It'll just wipe right up. Um, what I have to say about this, you guys, is just go for it. Do not worry about your art being perfect. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like a banana leaf or a jungle leaf. Um, people call abstract art abstract art for a reason. People throw paint at canvases and charge so much money for it and call it abstract art. You just got to own it. Draw your design out. Have fun with it. Laugh at yourself if it looks goofy. Just own it and say, what do you mean that doesn't look like the back of a leopard? I mean, it was the back of a leopard to you and your brain, right, when you drew it. So don't worry about it. Um, and just move forward and paint. So you can see me here. I've got some small artist brushes and I am just uh, painting my leaves. I'm just filling in my leaves. I'm just praying that these will look like leaves when I'm done. I've never done these type of leaves before. I've never done a leopard back before, <laughs> but uh, I just felt inspired. At, I had no plans to do this, okay? So when I did the leopard on the front of the dresser, someone had said, what are you going to do on the sides? I was like, you know, I really don't know. I don't know. But it became so crazy over the top, top glamorous jungle on the front that I was like, I'm just gonna 
I'm going to bring the jungle to my leopard dresser. I'm just going to bring the jungle in. So that's what I did. <laughs> so I used malachite for the green on that leaf there. And then um, I am using elderberry, which is the deep purple. And I just started using the deep purple for the shadowing of this leaf. And I had fun. I didn't know what I was doing here either. I just had fun with it. I just started bringing in. I kept that same color palette that I had sitting out from the front. And I just used that same color palette. I'm using blue agave and malachite and elderberry and I just kind of focus on one leaf and then I move on to another leaf just adding some shadowing and highlighting and just enjoying the process and you can see how quickly the paint is drying even while I'm working on it the this clay paint dries so quickly I think what I realized is that I used the dark elderberry around the edges of the leaf because it really helped it to, it helped to define it. And then I would just kind of draw this like little center vein in it. Um, I found that to be really helpful. Okay, so now I'm going to work on this giant banana leaf and I'm using, this is just in case you want to know colors. This is Lonnie's Lagoon that I'm using right here. And I know for a fact, I'm going to throw in some elderberry and blue agave in this one as well. And even some of the bug I wanted to add some hot pink into this leaf as well. So I'm using a larger brush right now and I'm kind of working around my leopard tail. I had already filled in my leopard tail there. I'm just kind of painting around that. You want to overlap your images. When you're drawing something, um, you don't want everything to be separated. You don't want it to look like clip art. So you want to bring them together. So allow them to, you know, some, some, you know, the leopard tail is in front of this leaf, yet it's behind the other leaf. And you can see the leaves up at the top. I kind of threw like a, a palm leaf back in there in the background that I'll paint here in a little bit with pistachio. You want them to touch and, and overlap. All right, so while my Lonnie's Lagoon on my banana leaf dries, I'm gonna go ahead and move over and do the body of my leopard. I'm using a color called Wheat, W-H-E-A-T, Wheat. Um, I mean, I honestly thought about doing my leopard hot pink. It doesn't matter. It wasn't meant to be realistic, um, but this actually was the most realistic color. But I felt like with all of the blues and the pinks, I needed something that was a little bit neutral. And I also have a surprise planned for on top of the leopard here in just a minute and I felt like this was a really good complimenting color for my surprise. All right, so here I am again. You see me, um, do you see that I don't even wash my brushes? There's pistachio green on that brush. It's still on there and I just go ahead and dip into the deep purple, which is like an eggplant color, um, elderberry, and I'm just outlining the sleep because I felt like it needed a little bit of definition. You can see I've got a hibiscus flower painted down there without detail. Um, I have done the pistachio green fern. I outlined my blue banana leaf with um, a green. There's just, it's, there's just real no rhyme or reason. I'm just playing and it's what I want to inspire you to do as well. So this is my surprise. <laughs> We're going to do the gold leaf leopard spots on the leopard too. So they're not going to be texturized this time. Um, whereas we did make them raised on the front. They're not going to be raised stencil. So all I'm doing is holding the stencil in place and just painting with the a tiny craft brush and the adhesive right onto the paint. And you'll be able to see in just a minute when I raise the stencil up, you can actually see where the adhesive is. But again, you do the same thing. You wait 30 minutes for this adhesive to dry before you apply your gold leaf. All right, you can see the spots there above where I'm putting the leaf sheet. So you can see the, the adhesive has dried. And um, you just do the same exact thing. You, hold, you put your gold leaf in place and rub it on really well. And then see me tear away some excess. I'm just gonna use that up at the top there. And once it's in place, you do the exact same thing. You take a brush. You don't have to wait. You can do it immediately. You take a brush and you just knock away the excess. And we now have what should look a little bit more like the back of a leopard sitting there <laughs> with its spots. Isn't it pretty? Super brilliant, right? The tail is done. The detail is done. I love this. This has been so much fun. 
and here is the front i've done the hardware look how reflective that gold leaf is on that hardware you can actually see like a mirror reflection there's a handle without it and a handle with it well i'm going to choose that handle with gold leaf all day long and this is the completed side isn't that fun it is so much fun look the way this is sunlight coming into my shop um, and it's causing this reflection against that gold leaf you can't beat that and that's the opposite opposing side which I didn't even show you how to do that one it's basically more of the same I just did a few different type of flowers I only did a leopard tail on the side you can also see some white squiggly doodle art I included this in my blog I really went over this in my blog and I didn't talk about it here I didn't video the process but I used a white oil based paint pen and I waited for everything to dry I I top coated the entire dresser in gator hide top coat I let that dry and then I used my oil based paint pen last and it really defined the the doodles the doodle art defined my florals and my my artwork on the sides and I think this piece is so wow and so much fun I hope you love it as much as I do So what do you think about that? What do you think about this? I love this so much. It's way outside of the box for me. I don't know where it came from, but there it is. I like it so much. I love the hand-painted design. I love the doodle art. I love a little bit of a sneak peek of a leopard tail, and I really, really enjoyed this entire process. I enjoyed teaching you as well. Like this video, subscribe to my channel because I'm here every single Sunday bringing you a new project. Sometimes they're simple, sometimes they're very complicated like this. You never really know what you're gonna get, but what you do know is that I will be here every single Sunday with a new project that I wanna share with you. So have yourself a fabulous day, and we'll see you next Sunday.